signal we uh, the point here we want to design something at the transmitter so that when we multiply it by our signal and the signal reaches the receiver we get the same quality of the signal as if we did equalization at the receiver but without doing actual equalization in this case at the receiver so to design this we need to add something at the transmitter mathematically this corresponds to something r new variable i put here r is a matrix I multiply the record x by r, I multiply it by r. And to get the effect that I want, this h multiplied by r should be equal to identity or unity. Logic, yes, because if this is unity, identity, then I can really detect it easily. Unity. So then I come here, come here, and say that h multiplied by r equal identity matrix then r should be equal to h inverse h inverse is like h divided by h equal one but like in matrices we cannot divide we say one over h yeah. we always h to minus one this is true when we have square matrix we don't have square matrix mathematically have square matrix, you cannot find the inverse. Can you find the inverse? You find pseudo inverse. What's the pseudo inverse then in this case? H, H emission multiplied by H. This is all inverse multiplied by H emission. R should be something like this. When you multiply your data, record your data, when you would say multiplication at the transmitter, we mean recording. This is the technical term in communication. If somebody says recording, recording means basically multiplying your signal with a matrix. This is what recording is. Uh, or pre equalization, some people call it. Pre equalization, pre recording, mathematically means you have your signal multiplied by a matrix. And this matrix is designed in such a way that it removes the effect of the channel after it passes the channel. Mm -hmm. This is this is at the transmitter. Okay? This is at the receiver. This is because of the channel. X, this data X, you produced it at the transmitter. R, you put it at the transmitter. H is because of the channel. And N is because of the receiver. Okay? Then you, you calculated it and you found R. Now compare R here, R, with W here. Don't you think it's the same thing? Yeah. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But what I did, I did this, calculate this ahead of time at the transmitter. Mm -hmm. I multiply my signal, record my signal before I transmit it in such a way that I remove the effect of the channel. Okay? This is what R should be. At the receiver, you divide by H or you multiply by H minus the inverse. And here, you do this before you send your data. When you do this before you send data, by the time this signal reaches the receiver, this and this cancels each other. The receiver will receive X plus some noise. You immediately did it. You don't need to do anything processing here. So what will happen here? You save battery on your phone. You don't do any processing. You quickly detect low delay. Quickly detect your signal that therefore you don't cause too much delay. Clear? We have these advantages. But does this advantage Come without any other side effects when we put R like this? It Look, has, it, has some, it has some side effects. What are the side effects? When you want to record by R, R here is dependent on the channel. And assume we have at the receiver, when we equalize at the receiver, we have a noise, ma noise enhancement problem. And assume you are in a deep fade, the same problem that I talked about. Okay, deep fade, deep fade, deep fade. If you want to 
equalize, pre-equalize for the effect of the channel. Pre-equalize means to remove the effect of the channel beforehand as a transmitter. In this case, if you are in a deep fake, how much power you need to put here so that you avoid the deep fake? Almost infinity power. Infinity power you need to put so that you avoid this deep fake. Now, is it practical to put infinite power or even high power? Not practical. The government, the policy regulators, always, always tell telecom companies that you are allowed to use this much power at your base station. You cannot exceed it. You cannot send more than this because of many reasons. First, because so that you don't interfere with others, so that you don't cause health issues, so that you don't uh, cause any other problems to your neighbors who are using close frequencies to yours. So imagine the solution is perfect, amazing. It gave us some advantages there at the receiver. You save your battery, you lower your delay, you quickly decode your signal, but imagine where we got stuck. There is a trade-off. You try to fix it from one hand, you cause some other problems in the other hand. How can we solve this? Why don't people use this then? They don't use it basically. This is basically the they try to not use this because of the huge amount of power you need to put. And basically, if you were able to add this much power, you will reach to a performance that's almost exactly similar to the performance of additive white gauss and noise channel. But you cannot do this. One way to avoid this is this. Look at me. One way I did it in my PhD to avoid this deep fake things and the infinite power things is look at your spectrum, yes? Your, this, these are your subcarriers, yes? Yeah. And see which subcarrier is going under deep fade. Let's say this is the channel, okay? This subcarrier is going under deep fade, yes? If I want to equalize this, I want to put too much power here, which is costly for me and costly for the base station. And I'm not allowed from policy perspective to put that much power. So what I do, I don't transmit over this subcarrier, block it. I don't transmit over it. What I do, I utilize this subcarrier to reduce to, to, to some other functionalities that are useful in communication by reducing the peak to average power ratio, reducing out of band emission, because I don't want to waste this carrier. This carrier costs money, it costs millions of dollars. I don't want to waste it, so what I do, I use it to help me improve the transmission overall, but not for data. I'm not going to use it for data. I'm going to not use it and just equalize my signal where the signal is really good and not here. This is, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to use it for other helpful things like peak to average power ratio, out of band emission, interference reduction. But I'm not going to use it for data because if I use it for data and want to equalize, I need to use too much power. I use this technique for OFDM and I use it for polar codings as well in two different papers. And I can share these papers with you so that you can learn from them. So the point is this, you can pre-process the things at the transmitter before you're sent to save power and free battery and uh, computation at the, and make it more suitable for Internet of Things, but you get stuck with the power enhancement problem which can conflict with the maximum power you are allowed to transmit and in this case we need to either avoid the points at which you need to amplify your power too much or uh, or maybe use something different than this. Now the thing I want to emphasize is all these techniques, most of them, they can be used at the transmitter instead of using it um, at the receiver. So we pre-equalize our signal before we send it in the transmitter. And therefore we can get some more advantages. That's it, thank you.